This video introduces regression and corresponds to Chapter 16 in your textbook. So, really, regression is a, an issue of relation versus prediction. When we look at correlation, what we're talking about is describing the relationship between two variables, whereas regression actually uses one variable to predict the other. So what do we know from x to predict y? So correlation, you don't really have a particular dependent variable. Um, however, with regression, you do. So the dependent variable is y. It's the variable that you're predicting. And the independent variable is x, your predictor variable. So there's a couple of types of regression. We are going to focus on simple linear regression, um, which is when you have a single independent variable and you use that to predict the dependent variable. So um, we're predicting an individual score on the dependent variable based on one independent variable score. With multiple linear regression, it's like simple regression, but now we have more than one independent variable that we're using to predict a single dependent variable. So we could say um, something like, oh, let's predict who's going to do well in graduate school. So we can look at their GRE score, and we can also look at their GPA as two different predictors. And perhaps we have some rating scale for letters of recommendation, and we could look at that as well. So that would be a case of multiple linear regression. But we're going to focus mostly on simple linear regression. So think about it. Several studies have found a relation between weight and blood pressure. So answer for yourself what is meant by a correlation between the variables and how you would frame that question for a simple linear regression. Go ahead and pause the video. Okay, so a correlation between these variables means that as weight changes, so does blood pressure. So the heavier a person is, it's likely that the higher their blood pressure is. So that's probably a positive relationship. So if we wanted to frame this as a question for simple linear regression, we could say, does weight predict blood pressure? Or does blood pressure predict weight? Notice that you can still um, use them interchangeably, but perhaps one of those is the thing that you really want to predict. So I would imagine that it might be more important to predict blood pressure from weight. So we can identify people just based on a simple screening thing, whether they might have um, elevated blood pressure, those kinds of issues. Okay, so with linear regression, we have a regression equation. Um, y hat, the little hat on top of that y, signifies that it's a predicted value. So y hat equals a plus bx. So it should look pretty familiar to you from high school algebra. Um, y equals mx plus b is the slope um, for a line. But here we're going to use a for our intercept and b for our slope, and we multiply that by x. So the intercept, a, is the predicted value of y when x is equal to 0. And the slope, or b, is the amount that y is predicted to increase for an increase of 1 in x. So if we are predicting an individual's blood pressure based on weight. For every pound more that that individual weighs, then we would expect the blood pressure to go up a certain number of points. Okay, so that would be our slope. For every one, a one unit increase in x, this is the change we expect to see in y. So here is an equation for a line. You've got your independent variable. Always the x variable is going to be on the x-axis and the y variable, your dependent variable, on the y-axis. And you've got all these plots here. And so for one unit increase in x, we would expect a certain amount of increase in y. So I think for a one unit increase in x here, we get a two unit increase in y. And we can draw a straight line right through those points because each one of those points is on the line. So, yep, here's that one unit increase in x and the two unit increase in y. 
and we get that line of best fit that goes right through them all. Okay, so what we're really doing here is we're fitting a mathematical model to our data. So the regression equation is the best fit, like the best line that you can draw that reduces how far away the points are from that line of the actual data because we can predict y, but we also have actual y scores. And that allows us to determine how well x predicts y. So the model predicts y given information on x. And then we can determine how well that model fits our data. And there's actually um, a particular calculation you can do to help do that. OK, so how do we get this regression equation? Well, first we get the correlation, then we get a z-score regression equation, or an, a standardized regression equation, and then we get a raw score regression equation, or an unstandardized regression equation. So we're going to start with some data with step one. So here we're calculating the correlation. Um, And we've got some data here on weight, and we've got some data here on height. And these are for children ages 0, so birth, to age 4. And here's our sums of squares x and our sums of squares y. Um, you might want to pause here and um, do some of this calculation for yourself for review, but you don't have to. Um, we'll substitute these values that we found into our regression equation formula here. And so what we end up with is a correlation of 0.995. Now, if you had started with the scatter plot, you would see the strength of this relationship at the outset and know, oh, yes, we can definitely fit a linear model here. So here's our scatter plot. And we can fit a line through this set of data. You notice that they're not in a perfectly straight line, so we will have some error. And we would expect that anyway, because our correlation is 0.995. So that's our scatter plot. And we're wanting to derive this. This is our step three to get y hat equals a plus bx. And finding out a and bx are, is our goal here. So these two forms of regression equations that we have, we have um, a standardized regression equation, which is created with z-scores and the correlation between x and y. And then we have the raw score, the unstandardized regression equation, which comes in the form of that y hat equals a plus bx. So our equations here, um, this is the first time you've seen this. So the z of y hat, so our predicted z score for y, is equal to the correlation between x and y times the z score for x. And the intercept here is always zero. You can prove it to yourself, but if you're saying that there's a correlation between two different values and you're using z-scores, um, if you substitute in the z of x um, and you know you want to find the z of y hat, right? If you say substitute in zero for z of y hat and then divide by the correlation, that's still going to be zero and z of x is going to be zero. So the intercept is always zero. That's why we don't have an intercept term here. I've left it off. For the unstandardized equation, then, we have y hat equals a plus bx. So we are going to start by deriving this standardized regression equation. So in order to do that, we take our formula, and we know that our value for the correlation between x and y is 0.995. So that's pretty simple. That's, that's the easy part. The next part is to find this unstandardized regression equation. And we're going to use definitions that, that have been um, given for how this linear regression equation works to help us do that in part. So the first thing that we need to do is find the intercept. So remember that when we're dealing with standardized scores, even though that z-score um, if equation formula doesn't have an intercept. Well, it does have an intercept. The intercept is zero. But um, if we're going to convert that to raw scores, then we have to actually find a z-score for when x equals zero. So we take our data, 
that we had from the correlation and we find the standard deviation and the mean for x and then we convert that into a z-score and use that z-score in the standardized regression equation to find that predicted z-score for y and then take that z-score for y and convert it to a raw score and that will give us the intercept. So here's how it goes. So we calculate the z-score for y and we'll use or I'm sorry, for x, and we'll use this particular formula here where we have the mean of x, the standard deviation of x, and that will give us the z of x. In our case, we're saying, okay, x equals 0, so 0, and here's our mean of x, is 30.625, and we divide that by 7.149, and we get a negative z-score of 4.284. Okay, so the next step is to take that 4.284 and predict y based on it. So you multiply the z-score by the correlation coefficient. So we've got z of x from right here, and we're going to substitute it into this formula, which we already know that our correlation between x and y is 0.995. We substitute in this value, and we get negative 4.262. Now, they're not very different, and we would expect that because this correlation is so strong between the two of them. So 0.99 correlation means that there's almost a straight line um, in terms of our expected um, line of best fit. So lastly, we're going to take that negative 4.262 and we need to put it back into the scale for our y variable, our raw score scale. So we're going to convert that raw score z-score to a raw score, excuse me, convert the z-score to a raw score. So y hat equals the z of y hat times the standard deviation of y plus the mean of y. And if we substitute in those values, we find that the predicted y for when x is 0 is negative 15.937. Now remember, um, x is height and we're predicting weight. And so, you know, if we're talking about babies at birth, none of them are going to have a height of zero. So this is not weird to have this negative intercept. It just means that it, when in the linear model, even though we don't have values that go down to, to the intercept value, um, it, it just means that's where that particular value crosses the y-axis. So when x is zero, this is what y is, negative 15.937. So now we've found the intercept, we need to find the z-score for when x equals 1. So we're going to find the predicted value of y when x equals 1. And the reason we do this is because the slope is defined as, for each one unit increase in x, how much can we expect y to change? So we can use this one unit increase in x to help us find that change in y, because it's a linear equation, we will expect that to be a consistent value. It doesn't really matter whether you're saying x equals 0 and x equals 1, or x equals 5 and x equals 6. We're still going to get that same score. So uh, the process is pretty much the same. You take that z-score for x, you substitute the z-score for x into the, the, un, the standardized regression equation get that z-score for y, make it into a raw score. And the last part is we're going to subtract those two values so that we can find out what that, that increase in y is expected to be. OK, so we have our values for x equals 0 here. And you might want to pause the video and go ahead and see if you can compute this process for yourself. So go ahead and pause. OK, so here are our calculated values. And in the end, we get negative 14.718. Now, we've done this first part. We know that when y hat um, is x equals 1, we've got this negative 14 value, x equals 0, negative 15. So in order to find the slope, we subtract one from the other, which is essentially adding a negative value. Um, and then we get this 1.219 which gives us the regression equation if we substitute in our values. So here is when x equals 0 is the intercept, and that difference is our slope.